Teach your word that the entrance of your word will give understanding. It will bring light. Your word will bring conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Your word of God will bring encouragement. In the name of Jesus, I ask, O God, that your word will do us good. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Can I hear a living amen? Can I hear a loud amen? Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Theo, for reading God's word to us this morning. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Church, as we continue in our membership month with the theme of shift, and as we continue to reflect on the subject of what God is calling us to, I'd like to remind us that last Sunday in part one, the Lord led our hearts to consider the subtopic of wings of light or flight wings, whichever one you prefer. Speaking out of Ephesians number four, verse 25 and then 29 to 30, I spoke about the two wings of light that we require. What are they? What are they? Words and ways. Words and ways. Today, as we continue, in shift part two, I'd like to speak on the subtopic, fraud stars or fountains. Fraud stars or fountains. Someone say fraud stars or fountains. Ephesians number four, verse 28. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share. The truth about being a member of God's family or being a part of God's church is that you are either a fraud star or a fountain. You are either someone who is causing a problem or someone who is bringing about progress. In Paul's discourse with the church in Ephesus, he mentions these two categories of people in this one scripture. And I'd like to take the first one, fraudsters. Ephesians 4, 28a. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Can everyone read that with me? Anyone who has been stealing Fraudsters are swindlers. They are people who, who cheat, who steal. Fraudsters are, to say the least, they are crooks. They are, say it loud. Why did you put boys? Is the only boys who do the Yahoo thing? Why are you saying mostly? What, what do you people mean? I must protect my gender. Eh? You people are profiling us. Fraudsters are Yahoo people. Okay, I even agree. They are Yahoo boys. And they are Ron's girls. <laughs> oh, you people want to protest now, Abby? Is someone in church with me? Both of them, whichever way we will describe them, they are fraudsters. They are business is to steal. They are con artists. Taking what really does not belong to them. Fraud stars are like a story I told you years ago of three guys who would go to different churches every Sunday. They would arrive at the first church and worship in that service. Enjoy the praise worship. No sooner than they are getting to a time of offering, they exit. And go to the next church. They arrive at that church just as the word is being preached. They enjoy the message. Following the message is a time for giving. They exit. They get to the third church. As they arrive there, it's time for prayer. They enjoy the powerful prayer that goes on there. And as soon as the prayer is over, it's time for offering, they exit. So in one of those churches, particularly the prayer one, the pastor observed these three guys that every Sunday 
they would come in at that particular time, and as soon as it's time for giving, they will go. So one Sunday, when they came in, the pastor, having led the prayer, and he noticed them, announced, and said, close all the doors. Nobody must go out. Nobody must go out. The three of them looked at each other and said, Chai! it's like today, there is a court. <laughs> and so the offering bags were going around, and then one of them said, don't worry, I have a plan. As the offering bag got close to them, one of them fainted. The other two carried him out. <laughs> Fraud stars, even in church. Fraud stars. There are folks who stock in trade is to constantly be the people who do not give to God's work and to God's house. You see, fraudsters are people who are eaters, drinkers, consumers, takers. All they do is consume. They are grabbers. They are constantly taking and really not giving back. They have an excuse in saying every time, oh, it's those rich people who are to give. Oh, you know what me I have is small. Oh, you know what I get is this. Oh, you know I don't have. Yet God has never asked anyone to give from what they don't have. He's always asked us to give from what we have. So Paul said, hey, if you say you are a Christian, you no longer steal. The church is not the place for those who just enjoy to take away. So there are people who are very consistent in defrauding the church of God. They defraud by not giving. They defraud by taking also. How do they steal from church? How do people defraud the church? How are they fraudsters? There are those who fail to tithe. And honestly, I don't want to waste time trying to preach about tithe today. I think I've preached enough in this church about tithing. Listen to me. A Christian who is struggling with tithing is struggling with the most basic level of giving. Are you with me? You are struggling with tithing, eh? You are struggling with what is the basic thing. Because by the time you come to the New Testament, God does not call us to stay on 10%. God calls us to a cheerful, generous giving, which means 10% is minimum. 10% is, is like bare minimum. You are still struggling over 10% when God thought that by now you have reached a new level. I pray that God will deliver us in Jesus' name. There are those who give false tithe. So there are those who fail to tithe, but there are those who also give what? False tithe. And you know what? You are here praying, God bless me, do miracle, give me one billion. God gave you 100,000. How much was supposed to be your tithe minimum? You managed to give God five. You are now asking for one billion. God don't look you finish, oh. It's not human beings who do see finish, oh. It's God. Say who is faithful over a little. You will be faithful over. So he gave you 100,000. You are doing him 419. You now expect that he will now give you more. Look at someone and say, what tithe do you tithe? <laughs> there are those who give fake offering. Fake offering. Fake offering. Very fake offering. If I talk about that offering, you know, things have sort of gotten better now because... We don't all dance around with the bag again, but they still do it. Now them go dance 100,000 naira dance. 10 naira offering. Even though God has given them more. But they are all still better pass some people. They put empty hand in the bag like this and pull it back. Oh, you think I'm lying? You think I'm lying? I wish I could show you video. Then they church as I they talk now. Look at the person and say, now nah, you pastor they talk. They do like this. And they don't drop anything. They want to give the impression they have given. Listen, you don't deceive no one. And sometimes you don't realize how it is not me that is seeing you. It is him. The Bible says Jesus was just sitting there. They were giving, 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 giving. Giving money. And when they were done, Jesus said, come. Among all the people that gave, who gave the most? How do you think Jesus knew? He was seeing the thing. I hear people say, oh, don't let people see what you are giving. Do you know why 
when we give offerings and tithes, where, why we stand when we tithe here, is to help someone else get encouragement that tithing is good. I shared in church council a few weeks ago, for two consecutive Sundays, I had no tithe to give to God. I was miserable. Me, I like to tithe. I was miserable. I complained to God. I said, God, ah, no show. Even 1,000, nobody dashed me. See, every time I tithe, eh, it's not that I'm tithing 50 million. If I get 100 naira, I'm tithing it. So every Sunday, I'm standing. People are always wondering. Somebody asks me, if I, one of my children asks me, ah, every Sunday I say, yes, so. If God gives me 50 naira, Sunday I don't call rejoice. Tighter, stand. I have stood. <laughs> Because it's not about 50 million, it's about the fact that I can give God. So when I stand every Sunday, I stand with joy because this week God has been good again. Is somebody in church? Yes, sir. Two Sundays, I didn't sit tight to give God. I complain, no. I complain, I said, God, how far? Two Sundays, I'm just sitting, they say tighters, no show. Those who even used to say that, see that pastor is standing again, they no see complain to give, it's not good. So I talked to God. We finished worship that day, went for a program somewhere. And as we finished that program, somebody walked up to me and said, ah, I sent a message weeks ago to someone to reach you. I said, oh, sorry, I didn't get the message. He said, ah, I asked them to tell you to send me a account number. It's not a member of our church. I said, eh, what for? He said, ah, I wanted to send something. I said, eh, ah, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. That if God spoke to someone after I complained, who am I to complain? I sent him a account number. I never reached house, Bagam. I never reached house. A few hours later, someone from Ibadan sent me a message. I said, Pastor, sorry, I forgot. Months ago, your friend in Soso Place said he was going to send you some money. Has he sent it? I said, no, he never sent them, but I understand. This political season is very busy. He said, no, no, he's supposed to have sent it. Next thing, back up. And you say, I shouldn't tight. I tight dire. <laughs> Listen, I'm saying to you today, there are some of us who don't understand the gravity of what we are doing to ourselves. So you give this funny tight, fake tight, fake offering. My wife and I went to a wedding in Ibadan years ago. At that time, I had told God that my offering had gone from 100 naira, 200 naira to something more. I don't do this 100 naira offering to the glory of God. And then I preached the wedding. They were using this open tray to collect offering. So all the notes I saw there, you know how much I saw. Then I thought to myself, ah, since this is the level of the offering, let me also do... <laughs> Hey, may you not offend God. As I was trying to do the thing, God said, you have forgotten. I knew what he was saying. It was a matter that happened when we lived in the same Ibada. I've told the story many times. I'm out of time already today. Many years ago, we lived in Ibada. My wife worked at Bowen University. I worked at Baptist Building. I followed Dr. Shola to redeem camp. Pastor Ayo Rishi Jaffo preached that day. It was a prayer. Nigeria Praise Program, the one by General Gowon. And he asked us to drop every combo in our pocket that day. Ha! I said, for where? I'm a properly trained Baptist boy. Nobody can manipulate me to take money from my hand. And I went to that meeting that day for whatever reasons with all the money that we had. And now they said, drop it. Satan, get thee behind me. <laughs> So that day, I wouldn't drop the money. And they were going, and God said, well done. I was sitting behind Dr. Shola. Dr. Shola, Babadibu, others sat in front. We, Olente Lafa, sat behind them. <laughs> so I started to say, Lord, please forgive me. And I pleaded. I called them. I dropped it. I had one prayer that day. I said to God, don't let my wife ask me for money between now and Monday. So that on Monday, I will go to the office and get... I owe you to at least have something to hold in case of in case. So we went home and Monday, my wife asked up until Monday. 
until a few days later, money dropped in her account. And there was no explanation. She said she had asked questions. Where the money came from? Why are they paying this money? No explanation. Then I realized it was supposed to go to my own account. <laughs> it was my account it was supposed to have gone to. God said that's the answer to that matter. Can I talk to someone this morning and say, stop being a taker, be a giver. Una know the church. Stop being a taker, be a giver. Tell the person, don't be afraid of them. You are, you are afraid of them. False offering. Look, false needs, false claims. I don't have too much time. Do you know there are those who steal from the church? They defraud the church. Invoices for things that we never did. How about why? Church people, we they even fear to give you work for church. Because by the time you come back, oh la la, it would have been easier to have given it to someone else. Went to buy tires for our official convention vehicle, myself, Mr. Remy, the driver. And when we finished, the guy asked me, oh, God, how much should I write on the receipt? I said, what do you mean? He said, like, how much should I? I said, how much did we buy the tires? He said, oh guy, yes, but how much you want make I right? I said, my friend, will you stop that rubbish? Can't you see this is church motto? He looked outside, he said, eh, oh God. I said, look, stop it. I'm even a pastor. I don't take this right. He said, ah, oh God, make a chair, he said, give you, make you go right arm. <laughs> you no know, problem, go, go right arm. So I became more offended. And then the guy said, oh God, you they vex for true. Now church people, they do and pass, so. Members of church defrauding God's house. Work that we have not done, but we will pay because we trust that we are all working for God. Adi? Hello, church. Tap somebody and say, are you here? So the figures that finance we were talking about today, some of you, you may need to ask yourself whether or not true or not. <laughs> Samson, Adedo, can Lord have mercy on your life. Those of you who show up and say, oh, I have problem, I have problem. You just went to Trinity House. You have problem, you collected. You went to Peace Parish. You had problem, you collected. You came here, problem, you collected. You soon go to COD, problem, you collected. Defrauding God's house. My sister used to worship at Trinity House. And one day she saw one of those collectors. Who had collected there and is collecting? I said, ah, it was. Uh, I said, no. And in fact, we discovered that some people have a racket in church. They organize collectors. They organize collectors. So they come, they collect, and their percentage. Look at somebody and say, are you in church? Yes. You know, if I tell you everything that we pastors know, we not go fear. <laughs> Fraud stars. So you don't give, you don't support the work of the church, you reduce the resources. Number two, fountains. I think I've talked enough about fraud stars. Abby? Abby? I have tried. One day I will ask God to show me everybody's account. You are enjoying AC now, but when we're talking about money for AC, what did you give? I say, God, show me everybody's account. Show me Theo's account. I like to see the figures clearly. Then show me what Theo has been given. You know, in our local church, when we're growing up, at the end of the year, the church will print a booklet of all of our tithes that we have given. We had card. Hey, come and see people. As they announced that we are still going to produce. Hey. They now start going to add more. They go to add more so that their name, in short, this year we shall print booklet of titles. <laughs> number two, fountains. Ephesians number four, 28B. Can we read together, please? Let's read together, please. But must work doing. Uh huh. So those who build God's house are those who are fountains. A fountain overflows. It receives, but it doesn't keep it. It sends it out. 
a fountain is fresh because it's a channel. It keeps giving. And as it's giving, it is releasing. So it's a sharer, a provider, a contributor, a supplier. Fountains receive spiritual rebirth. And spiritual rebirth leads to spiritual stewardship. You see, you cannot be saved and then you don't become a steward. Salvation means that you understand that God is the one who has rescued you and therefore you go on to be a steward of God's resources. So Paul says, don't be a sponger. Don't be, a, you know a sponge? A sponge, what does it do? Soaks up, soaks up. Paul says, don't be sponging on the church. Don't be a leech. Go from being a sponger to being one who is a server in the church. So find work to do so that you too, you can have something you add to the people. When you were saved, God moved you from dependency to becoming a distributor. Are you with me? Salvation shouldn't keep you at the place where every Sunday, every day, you are standing there and begging people, no, salvation should move you to say, I am able to work, if that means being a cleaner. We offer some people jobs, they say, it's too for me. No, I can't do that kind of work. Gathered my teenagers when I was minister for youth. We were looking for a sexting in our church. That church, eh? We didn't have window or doors. It was open air church. The floor, always dusty. When we come on Sunday, we will sit and, and we're looking for sexting to be helping to keep it clean. Will it be clean? It's open air. So we said we needed sexting. I called my teenagers and said, guys, three of you can take this work home and be collecting the money. Yes, I said, right, 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 okay now. So one old baba that we don't know got the job of sexting at our church. Remember, no doors, no, so dust will always be there. Baba in the morning on Sunday when we come, we'll be cleaning and sweeping. Guess what used to happen? A Yoruba environment. Guess what used to happen? All those teenagers who say they will not do the work, they say, hey, collect this thing from Baba. What's wrong with you? So they will collect the broom, collect the rag, they work with them for do collect money. Now then go do the work. Who go collect money? That's exactly how some of us are. Bible says get something to do. But you are too big for that job. So you have nothing to contribute to continue to be a sponger. When you are a believer, you go from being a sponger. You work, you earn, you give. You know what? We are blessed differently. What I can give is not what someone else can give. And it's not a big deal. Out of my one, out of your two, out of your three, out of their own hundred, you earn, you give. So you must be committed to serve. A believer is one who shares, who gives, who sacrifices. You don't keep looking around and being a complainant. A believer is not that kind of a person. You are a channel. You receive, you release, you redistribute. That's what a believer does. Are there cheerful givers in this church? People are excited and enthusiastic to give. When they hear about giving, that's when they are most excited. I know a few people like that. Sometimes I they fear to mention giving near them. Because before I finish talking, they are already, okay, okay. Uh -huh. It's possible, it's possible. We can do it. God is looking for people like that. This church needs people like, listen, next Sunday we'll focus more on our mission work. We have 26 churches that we support. 25 of those, one church has no pastor now. That we support the pastors. We support the church and we support the pastors. Every month. If God gives us more grace, there is much work to be done. Much more work that we can do. Fountains understand that ownership and operation of resources belong to God. I don't know about you. But I hear God saying this morning, my work is suffering because I put resources in your hands and you are not releasing them. 
You see, for each one of us, God placed us here for a time like this. I said last Sunday, some people came to New Dawn at the start. They made sacrifices and purchased this property, the land. Some came and joined them after. They put up the tents that were used to worship. Some came after them, and we bought the other land where that property, that, that wonderful church got burnt. Some came after them. Resources went in there to put up the structure that was on the land. And then some came, we are doing this. You, God put you here, what are you doing? Do you know that it's very possible that God doesn't need all of us to give for building? God has positioned you to do the work for building. Say, here is my 100 million. Finish up this work. Let church take their remaining money and do missions. Do you know that God put you here? Particularly because he's put a burden in your heart for people who have needs. So care ministry is supposed to be your portfolio. Every combo we are talking about, God put in your hand. For that purpose, all he wants you to do is to say, church, here is a 50 million, a 100,000. Here is 10,000 every month. Please take care of those who have needs. Do you know that there are those of us that God put us here for missions? God says, pray for missions, give for missions. Every time you hear anything in your heart, it's missions, missions. And God has been speaking and saying, come on, guy, what are you doing? There are those that God put here to make sure everything runs well. When we come to church, we enjoy worship, cool AC. In fact, in your mind, God already told you, set up coffee shop and tea shop. Let there be cake and biscuit. But you know, Greg Bringham, God is talking to you. So, are you a fraud star or a fountain? Are you denying God's house of resources? Or are you providing resources for God's house? Do you know how many people God would have reached if you were to respond? This morning, Sister Doing will come to lead us as we give. I wonder what your giving will be like today. I wonder whether finance will be able to close early or they will close late because they have to tally figures like never before. Are you in church today? Those who are online and those of us who are here, I wonder if what you will give today will be your new direction to say, you know what? I'm just going to start a different direction today. I will give God this kind of giving like never before. In fact, I realized that I've been stealing from God. I'm going to start paying up now. So when finance goes to their room to work, and when all of us have gone home, they will be calling us hours later and say, we still did church, oh. we are still counting, we are still tabulating. Will you be the one to make that happen? When we are talking about doing the rest of the work of the church, we will be able to say, yes, we have the resources. Let's go ahead. Let's fix everything we need to fix. Bow your head and let's pray.